once again this morning. We bless you for who you are, thanking you for another day like this. Thank you for how you have brought us to this fellowship today. We ask that, Lord, you will shower your blessing upon every one of us today in Jesus' name. Commit all the rest of our brethren on their way coming. We ask that you hasten them here, that they come and be a partaker of this blessing today in Jesus' name. Thank you, faithful God, your answer. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. And the ocean say, God bless you. Let's be seated. By the grace of God this morning, we are going to be looking at our, our SARS discussion, lesson 27. Our SARS discussion, lesson 27. Before we look at lesson 27, last two weeks, by the grace of God, our teacher told us about the death of John the Baptist. The death of John the Baptist. Who can remind us what he or she gained from that topic? The death of John the Baptist. Volunteer, please. What do you gain from the past week, last two weeks topic about the death of John the Baptist? Give it to Apostle. Praise the Lord. We as Christians, before <coughs> we shouldn't make decisions in a haste. We should look at the things. We shouldn't promise things that we know that is contrary to the will of God. And whenever things, issues are being presented to us, we should evaluate those things whether it's what it is contrary to the will of God. Anything that is contrary to the will of God is not. A promise that somebody should embark on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. God bless you. In addition to what our brother have said, we saw that John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. He was beheaded by standing for the truth. Because he spoke the truth, he was beheaded. And we told that death is certain to every one of us. Death is certain to every one of us. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 27, it said, It is appointed unto a man, unto a man wants to die, but after death comes the judgment. Believers need to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. We must live in a holy life, and as we do, God will bless us in Jesus' name. By the grace of God this morning, we are going to be looking at lesson 27, and the topic is Denounce, Defilement, Avenge. Dinner's defilement avenged. Our memory verse is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 49, from verse 5 and 6. And our text is taken from Genesis 34, from verse 1 to 31. Because of our time, we are not going to take all the tests. We're going to look at Genesis 34, verse 1 to 10. Before that, can anybody recite for us our memory verse, Genesis 49, from verse 5 and 6. Any volunteer in the room? Genesis chapter 49, from verse 5 and 6. Can we open our Bible here? Genesis 49, from verse 5 and 6. Let's recite it together after my count of two. One, two. Let's go. Simon and Levi are brethren, instrument of cruelty are in their habitation. O oh, my soul, Come not thou into thy secret, unto thy assembly, my honor. Be not thou unlimited, for in their anger they slew a man. In their safe way they dig down a wall. Genesis chapter 49, verse 5 and 6. Our text is taken from Genesis 34, from verse 1 to 31. But we need the first reader to read from verse 1 to 10. Genesis 34 from verse 1 to 10. Please, first reader. Genesis chapter 34, verse 1 to 10. And then now the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, a Levite, priest of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her, and defied her. And his soul clave unto Dina, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel, and spake kindly unto the damsel. 
And Shek and spake unto his father, Herman, saying, Get me this damn cell to wife. And Jacob heard that he had defied Dina, his daughter. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field, and Jacob heard his feast until they were come. And Herman, the father of Shechem, went out unto Jacob to commune with him. And the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they heard it, and the men were grieved, and they were very wroth, because he had wrought folly in Israel in lying with Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to be done. And Herman communed with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longeth for your daughter. I pray you give, give, him, give her him to wife. And make ye marriages with us, and give your daughters unto us, and take our daughters unto you. And ye shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade ye therein, and get ye possession therein. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sister. God bless you. The story we are about to listen to this morning is about two family. That is the story we are about to listen to this morning is about two family. Jacob and Hamon family. He said, when Jacob led from Padanaram to Canaan, he went with his family to Canaan. Shaken the son of Ammon, saw Dana and took her and lay with her and defied her. When Jacob heard about it, he waited for the two children to come back from the feed, which is Simon and Levi. In retaliation for their rape of their sister, Dana, they wipe out all the men of Shechem. Here, by the grace of God, they are talking about the story of this man, Jacob and Ammon's family. We told that Jacob is the father of Dana. And it happened that when they went to Cana, here was Shechem, the son of Ammon, saw Dana, and he lied with Dana. And because of this now, it made the children of uh, it made the children of Jacob to have enmity with the children with the with the child of Hamon, and because of that, they took retaliation and destroyed the city of Canaan. In retaliation for their rape of their sister, they now wiped out all the men of Shechem. A tribe. A tribe crime was committed against Diana, the daughter of Leah. The response by her brother was worse than the crime. We saw here that despite Diana has committed a crime here, but the two brothers came also, and the crime they also committed, it was worse than that of, uh, it was worse of that of uh, Diana, their sister. Diana went on her exploitation when her brother were on the feed shepherding their father's flock. She felt nobody should limit her freedom of movement. This was when the brother of Diana went on exploitation to the father's flock. They went to look at their father's flock. Here was Diana. He went on his own that nobody can control her. He took on her own step and he went outside. Because of this, this was why uh, Shechem now defied her. He said, many of our parents today never have time enough for their children. Welfare. A lot of our children, a lot of our parents today also never have time of our children's welfare. They never look at our children. They never took care of their children. They leave their children on their own to do whatsoever they want. Many of the children today, when they are with their phone, they come far with what they are seeing in the world. And a lot of children today, immediately with their, with their phone, they have gone far. And that is why we parents, we need to be careful to take care of our children, to look after their well-being. They worry when the children, they worry when the children go out, they start calling them and want to know where they are. Many of our parents today, whenever our children go out, we are worried where they are. We are calling them, we want to know where they are, we are looking about their footsteps. But we never ask them, and immediately they are at home. They are on the internet, they are with their phone, they have gone away. You will never look at them when they are at home, because they have gone, at, they have gone far to the world. That is why we parents also, we need to also 
try as much as possible today to monitor our children whenever they are at home. Jacob was not happy about the action taken by the children. He ordered the Canaanite to go and circumcise all their men in the, in the country, and they did. But it was after the circumcision that Jacob's children still went to Canaan and fight war with them and kill all the men in Canaan. This was what made Jacob not to have peace before his death. Here also we saw that despite the action that the children of uh, uh, Jacob took, Jacob wasn't happy about it. He was not happy about the action they took. And also this led to his not having peace before his death. Before his death. Believers should examine all things in the light of the Bible and with the help of the Holy Spirit before doing them. Ammon influenced his people, brought them destruction, the wages of sin, for all both high and low is dead. Sin terminates destruction. We are told here this morning that the wages of sin is dead. May God help us in Jesus' name. By the grace of God, we are going to be looking at the teaching this morning in three headings. This is just the summary of the of the study. We are looking at the teaching this morning in three headings. Point one, the dangerous exploitation, exploration of unfamiliar territory. Point two, marriage proposal and deceitful offer. Point three, barbarous and bodily art under the sessions of religion. Let's look at point one. Point one, the dangerous exploitation of unfamiliar territory. Job chapter one, verse seven. Can somebody read for us Job chapter one from verse seven? Job chapter one from verse seven. The brother, please. Job chapter one from verse seven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Job chapter 1 verse 7. Job, Job 1 7. Job 1 7. Job chapter 1 verse 7. Yes. Okay. And the Lord said unto Satan, When hence comest thou? And Satan answered and said, And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Amen. Praise the Lord. We see here that Satan is walking up and down on it. Satan is walking up and down on it. That is why we believers need to be careful today not to fall into the hands of Satan. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Can somebody read it for us, please? First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. First Peter chapter five verse eight. Be sober, be vigilant, because of your adversary, the devil, as a rolling lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. The devil is walking about, seeking who we may devour. That is why he said we need to be sober and be vigilant, because the devil is walking up and down, seeking who to devour. Jacob was in a place in Canaan where God did not want them to go. See, it, it was a new place. Dana went out exploring. From there, from there, she got raped by Sheke, the son Haman. When Jacob heard about it, he waited for his son to come back from the feed. In Genesis chapter 34, verse 21, Genesis 34, verse 25 to 26. Can somebody read for us? Genesis chapter 34, from verse 25 to 26. Genesis 34, from 25 to 26. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So 
Genesis 34, verse 25. And it came to pass on the third day when they were so that two of the sons of Job, Simon and sons of Jacob, Simon and Levi, their brethren, took each man his sword and came up came upon the city boldly and slew all the males and they slew Hammer and shaken his son with the edge of the sword and took Diana out of Shechem's house and went out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. You see, when the two sons of Jacob came from the field, they went to the city and slew all the men, including Amor and Shechem. And they took their sister out of the Shechem house. They tried to justify their action with religion. Christian, Christian must avoid careless visitation as it leads to numerous other evil. All members of the family should endeavor to make the home a heaven for all. The purpose of Satan is to kill, to steal, and destroy. I pray Satan will not come into our home in Jesus' name. Question one. What can believer learn from Diana's wandering? What can believer learn from Diana's wandering? Volunteer, please. Okay, our brother. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, as we can see uh, from the story, they uh, just came into a new city, and Diana herself was not. Uh, discipline enough going into the city unknown city that he doesn't know how the uh, the people behave and that leads to her defiling and again lead into marriage that provoke the people of uh, Jacob to murder the uh, people of the city and what I learned there is that uh, we should be able to guide our daughters, not just our daughters, but every of our uh, children, not to tap, go into whatever they don't understand well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. God bless you. He said, wanted to around people who have low moral standard is deadly. We saw here, Diana went to wandering herself with the people that doesn't have moral standard. And because of that, it led her to rape. So I pray God will help us out and we take care of our children in Jesus' name. Point two. Let's go to point two. Marriage proposal and the fight deceitful offer. Marriage proposal and deceitful offer. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 and 17. Can somebody read it for us, sister? Second Corinthians chapter 6, from verse 14 to 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, from verse 14 to 17. A sister, please. 14 to 17. Be ye not equally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with dust? For what part has he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temples of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them, and be ye separated, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean things, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sister. God bless you. Uh, can somebody read for us also First Peter chapter 2, verse 9? First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9.
Take that right on the cross. But here are chosen generations, the royal priesthood, and the whole nation, and peculiar people, that ye shall show forth the praises of him who I called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, from where we have read from the book of uh, Second Corinthians, chapter 6, 14 to 17, where our sister have just read, he said, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That is to say, you as a believer, don't be equally yoked with an unbeliever. Don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. He said, Of what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? As far as you are a student of light, what, what right have you have to do with darkness? People that are in darkness, that those are the people who have not known Christ. And you that is in light, you don't have any communion with them. He said, and what concord has Christ with Balaam, or what part has he that believed with an infidence? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? You don't have any agreement together. For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them. That is what God is saying. For children of God, you need to come out of among them. Come out of among them, unbeliever. Come out of among them. That is what the word is telling us here. And also, where our brother have read in second in First Peter chapter two verse nine. First Peter chapter two verse nine. Let's quickly go there again. First Peter chapter two verse nine. You say you are a choosing generation, children of God. You are a choosing generation, a royal priesthood. You are a choosing generation. We are choosing. We are choosing generation. And I pray God will make us to be choosing generation in Jesus' name. Some believers who are being tempted often fall to see the grand designs of the enemy of frustrated the divine plan, not only for them, but also for their future generation. We need to watch and pray always. We Christians ought to today, by the grace of God, the word of God is telling us we need to watch and pray all the time. Watch and pray. Parents who give their children to the unconverted and godly children who go for their ungodly in marriage bring reproach to themselves and the household of faith. If you bring, if you give your children to unconverted people, you are bringing reproach to the household of faith. And I pray that none of us will bring reproach to the household of faith in Jesus' name. Let's look at question two. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Question two C. Describe the guiding. Describe the guiding for godly marriage. Describe the guiding for godly marriage. I need a volunteer, a answer from the congregation. Describe the guiding for godly marriage. Okay, our sister dear. Hallelujah. Be a godly guide for Christian marriage. Both of them must be a believer. They must be a man and a woman, not a girl and a boy. And they must be born again. They must know the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. They must know the Lord. Before you can give your children to anybody, make sure that that person is also a Christian, as you are a Christian. Believers should examine all things in the light of the Bible. You must examine all things in the light of the Bible. Question three. How should believers treat marriage proposal of unbelievers? How should believers treat marriage proposal of unbelievers? Any answer, please? Any volunteer? How should believers treat marriage proposal of unbelievers? Yes, Apostle. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Marriage proposal to an unbeliever is something that God strictly warned. Shouldn't be accepted. So no matter how it looks like. But they will draw you away from God, from serving God. So, with God, 
You never plan. Father and Lord to the devil. Have anything to do with the devil. So as a believer, choose from God's people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Marriage proposal for from unconverted person should not be accommodated. It should not be accommodated at all. Like what our brother said, we should not give our children to unbelievers. That, that is what the Bible has told us, that what communion has light with darkness. As far as we are the children of light, we don't have anything to do with darkness. We, as children of light, we should not give our children to the dark, the, those that are in darkness. Question four, what is the danger of unequally yoke in marriage? What is the danger of unequally yoke in marriage? Any volunteer, please? Okay, by Friday. Hallelujah. I tell you again that the land that you are going to, don't take their daughter in marriage and don't give your daughter unto them to marry. If not, they are going to take them away from me. Be married with a non believer, have it in mind. If you are praying in the house one day, little by little, that is how it will take you away from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. God bless you. In addition to what our brother has said, unequally yoke in marriage bring reproach to themselves and household of faith. Unequally yoke in marriage bring reproach to the household of faith. And I pray that we children of light will not give our children to the people of darkness in Jesus' name. Let's quickly look at point three before we pray. Point three, marriage proposal and deceitful, deceitful offer. Sorry, mar uh, Point three, barbarous and body art under the session of religion. Barbarous and body art under the session of religion. Psalm 1, verse 1 to 4, and Proverbs chapter 4, 14 to 15. Can somebody read for us Psalm 1, from 1 to 4, and Proverbs chapter 4, from verse 14 to 15. Psalm 1, verse 1 to 4, please. Thank you. Hallelujah. Psalm 1 from 1 to 4. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor seated, nor, nor, nor blessed is the man, sorry, blessed the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law let him meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he doth do it shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but like a chaff, like the chaff which the wind drives away. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You say, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. Blessed is that man. I pray that we all be blessed this morning in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 4, from verse 14 to 15. Proverbs Proverb chapter 4, from verse 14 to 15. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of the evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, sister. God bless you. You see, God is righteous and just. He did not spare Simeon and Levi for killing innocent people. Those who hide under religion or use it as a cook of perpetual all kinds of evil, including murder, shall not escape the robe of God, except they repent. Sinners sinner should repent and be saved to avoid perishing like Shechem and the inhabitants of the land who lost their lives. So, by the grace of God this morning, we see here God is, God is a righteous and just. He did not spare sermons and labor for killing innocent people. Those who hide under religion or use it as cloak of perpetual or kinds of evil, including murder, 
should not escape the wrath of God except they repent. Sinner should repent and be saved to avoid perishing like Shechem. By the grace of God, God is warning every sinner today to repent. If you know you are still living a sinful life today, God is telling you, come out of your sinful life, accept him as your Lord and personal Savior. That is what we have just heard this morning. We saw the story of Jacob's family and Hermon's family this morning. How the how, how uh, Jacob's uh, children key the people of Canaan just because of their daughter, just because of their sister, Diana. So, by the grace of God, God is warning us today as Christians to debrief from every sin. Whatsoever sin that you find yourself in, God is telling you this morning, come out of it. And that is what God is using to warn every one of us this morning. And he's saying this morning again, as, he, as, as, as we are going to get married, I said, you don't have anything unequally yoked together with unbelievers. If you want to give your children to a Christian, make sure that the person you are going to give to should be a Christian, not un unbelievers. And this is the word of God concerning every one of us this morning. And where we have read also in First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. That we, as children of God, we are a chosen generation. God has called us from his marvelous, from from darkness to the marvelous light, and that is why we are a shooting generation. Wherever you find yourself, you should know you are a shooting generation. You should shine anywhere you find yourself. And that God, as you shine, God will continue bless, to bless every one of us in Jesus' name. Let us stand up as we are going to pray this morning. Let's commit the topic we have had this morning unto the hands of God. Let's thank God for the way God has blessed us through His word again this morning. We have heard from this family. The children uh, we heard from Jacob's and Amos' family. And we are told this morning again how to take care of our children. As parents this morning, how are you taking care of your children? Wherever they go, do you monitor them? Do you, take, do, uh, do you look after their welfare? It is important for us as parents to take care of our family. Let's thank God for what we have heard. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's continue to thank him this morning again. Thank him for the way he has blessed us through his word. Let's give thanks and honor to his mighty name. Let's thank him that we will not bring reproach to the house of the Lord. Let's commit ourselves unto the hands of God. God is just. God is righteous. God will give us the grace to live in a holy life and a purity life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Our faithful God, we thank you once again this morning for how you have blessed us through your word. We pray that, Lord, the grace for us to live in a holy life, purity of life, grant unto every one of us in Jesus' name. As we continue in this meeting, continue with us, O Lord. Thank you, faithful God, your answer. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And the shall say, We thank the Lord so much for our study this morning. I believe the Lord has uh, spoken to us. It's a familiar passage. And uh, I trust that uh, much more than man can teach, the Spirit of God has revealed um, his mind to us this morning. <clears throat> First of all, let me begin by commending um, Pastor Festus. It was last night that I contacted him and told him to prepare for the side the scriptures. And that was because uh, Pastor Emmanuel had told me that he will not be able to um, come to church today because of his uh, exams and uh, some few things he needed to finish and submit. And, um, you know, sometimes when we do things in the church, let's understand that there's nothing anybody is doing that will not involve sacrifice. 
I remember there were people that I called at a time like that, and I called them on Saturday. I said, can you prepare for Saturday scriptures on Sunday? And they say, ah, no, they cannot because uh, <coughs> they, were, they didn't plan for it. And whatever we are doing, let's understand that it's a privilege for us to do it for God. Because the Bible says not many nobles are called. It's not about education. It's not about grammar. It's about, you know, total commitment that when the church of God has need of you, you will rise up to the occasion. I'm not saying it to elevate myself. Sometimes the arrow calls me and tells me, I want you to do this, 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 this. Every other thing I will stop just to go and focus on it because I know I'm not doing it for me. It's a call. I see that as a call that is coming from God through my leader. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. This morning, by the grace of God, we uh, have looked at our first uh, Old Testament study. And that's in continuation of where we left off before we, uh, um, now we are now returning. You know, we treated uh, uh, the story of uh, um, Jacob in Genesis chapter uh, 32 and 33. Then we moved to the New Testament study and we are coming to Genesis chapter 34. So if you, if you follow the side of the scriptures very well, and I want to encourage everyone that uh, don't have a booklet yet. We have the booklet. If you don't have, let us know. Um, we, we will give you, even for free. Um, but you can, you know, know the content and the structure of the Bible just studying this uh, side of the scriptures. We started from Genesis chapter 1, and bit by bit we've been doing both Old and New Testament. So by the time we are finished, there's no how you will not have gone through the Old Bible, the study of the Old Bible. So that's why we prioritize such uh, the scriptures. And beyond that, we encourage that people should read it at home. On, on your own, it's good. You just have a good understanding of you know, what the will of God is. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Based on what we have studied this morning, are there questions? Okay. Any other hand? Okay. Okay, let's start with um, well, Christian. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, Pastor, my question, you know, about what we learned today. Uh, we know that that Jacob daughter is not a, it's not a baby. It's a, not a child, it's a grown up somebody, yes. you know. So uh, in our own time, because this we discussed today, uh, this we, we are studying today is about family and life. So like, like example, if you have a child, maybe the child wants to go her own way or his own way, you know, along the line, and the child got pregnant with unbelief man. Uh, what are you going to do in that level? Maybe the person say, he wants to marry the child, but he, because he got her pregnant, are you going to give the child to the man or the what the destiny to follow because of the reproaches, the reproaches of in the family or the church? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, um, we saw what happened here, and uh, I believe there is. Uh, is a there's a lesson we can learn from the way the family handled it. There were things that uh, uh, was right that the family did. And one of those things was that we are not going to let you marry our daughter just because you have defiled the girl. And in the, by, you know, in the same way, fact that uh, somebody impregnated uh, or a, a daughter mistakenly went out there and she's impregnated does not mean that she should marry that man. You should see that as a mistake. We read that passage. Uh, light and darkness have no communion. And, we sh and we, God does not expect us to be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. 
So you don't marry somebody because uh, the pe person is pregnant for you. Or, um, I mean both ways, the man has no obligation to marry the pe a woman. If he fell into sin and the person, it was the dividends, that's the reward of sin for the both of them. So it is not uh, that uh, automatically, like, you know, those days when people were still doing it back home. I don't know if they still do it. They say they will use pregnancy to tie a man down. No man will be tied down. So if you make the mistake of being pregnant uh, as a girl or a man, thinking that that will make you marry you, he has no obligation. Um, and this, you know, passage tells us clearly, if a child, you know, mistakenly, uh, is put to a family way. Tradition will tell you then, come and marry her because already you are put her. But that's not what the Bible says. You need to sit down, know that this was a, 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 a dividend of your sin. And you need to go back and repent. And by the way, it doesn't mean that that woman will not still find the will of God in marriage, even with a child. So it shouldn't be, you know, a factor. Uh, for any woman uh, uh, or any man to marry a woman or as the case may be any uh, uh, woman to marry the man because uh, he has uh, impregnated her. I hope that uh, you understand. The Bible makes it very clear here. Yeah, we are not going to... First of all, let's see uh, what these boys said. I mean... Uh, Simeon and Levi, he said, you have dealt with our sister as an adult. And in ancient, you know, uh, Palestine, they see that as a sign of dishonor. If you impregnate a girl through rape, let's not forget that this is rape, essentially because they raped her and they didn't allow her to even go back home. They raped her and they also kidnapped her. What happened in this passage? You remember when we uh, I'll show you when we were doing the Sunday because when uh, Simeon and Levi went to the place and they did all they did, that was when they brought out their sister. So it wasn't like after the rape she was allowed to go. No. They kept her there. And they said, well, this is what we have done. And for that reason, uh, what is the big deal? Let us marry her. And eventually those who say, okay, you are going to marry her. Okay, if that is your offer, we too, we have an offer for you. But the offer they made was to pay them back, not even in their coin, worse than their coin. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Told them in love, and the girl insisted insist, insist that the man will marry her. Maybe the girl is unbeliever, or she's not yet born again. Are the parents going to dishonor the child or to accept the marriage? Is what I mean, sir. If yeah, the child is either raped or not raped, if she wants to marry a man and she's insisting that she's going to marry a man, what are you going to do? So that is, I mean, you've answered the question. Yeah, either the girl is raped or not raped. If she insists that this is the man I'm going to marry and I'm going to go away with this man, that's her choice. She will live with the consequences of that choice. If uh, the man uh, made a good husband for her eventually, ah, you are happy for them. And if she suffers abuse or whatever as a reason of that choice or decision she's made, she's going to live with the choice. There's nothing any one of us can do. We can only pray for them. That is the very, we can still love them and still, you know, pray for them and hope that they will come to the understanding. And sometimes the way God does it sometimes, because we are not God, because the, the, the outcome can either be two. In the process of time, 
she and the man, they eventually become born again and they live happily thereafter. The foundation was wrong, but God, you know, salvaged it, maybe through your prayers. Or it could be the reverse, where she will suffer the consequences of disobedience and rebellion. And she will learn from there. So when we find ourselves in that situation, and you have done everything you could do as parents, you don't beat yourself. You just say, well, I commit this person uh, you know, into your hands. There are so many marriages that people started in, you know, maybe as unbelievers. And in the process of time, God will save the wife. The wife now, because of love, because of prayer, will bring the husband into the fold. And both of them, they will serve the Lord. So there are some things that we, we don't have the power Also said also in that book of Deuteronomy I think chapter eight that in that land when we get to that land we should not marry this this people on their heart. But the, why I'm saying that because you can be a bit like me. I was a believer, yes, but I'm not. I don't think I'm. In this, I'm up to this level now. So when I went to marry my wife, so she wasn't born again. So, but the only thing I could do that I sat out and do, this is my case. I don't know whether you can go on with me in this way. But this is what I stand for. This is, what, this is how I want us to do life. If the choice is yours to say you want it or you don't want it, all, she said she will go on with me. She followed me by the grace of God in leading her to God have one half for sure. You cannot advise anybody to do that. Does that a lot of things happen when I want to get married? A lot of prayers and that but God, this is how it turns out. Does it mean it was not the will of God? The Lord. Hallelujah. Um let me begin by saying that the Bible says all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. But before I go to talk about, you know, the situation between, between you and your wife, uh, I don't think there are very few, we, I don't think there are lots of women that will find a, a young looking man like you that has come from Europe that wants to come and marry them, that they will not follow you. And it is in the advantage of um, um, the uh, uh, woman to marry a Christian. Every woman wants to marry a Christian man. The same way that every man will want to marry a Christian woman. Because you know that there is a level of you know, stability that that brings into the marriage. Uh, but then, Back to Leviticus. Let's not forget that when God was speaking, God was speaking to his people. And he's saying that between them, if that happens, then such man should pay the bright price of, but not an unbeliever. This instance is between these, you know, children of Jacob, Israel, and an hidden prince, 
uh, an unbelieving prince. But because this guy was a prince. In fact, the Bible says he was more honorable than all his you know, uh, people. That means that he was a dignified prince. That was why when the children of Jacob came to them and told them that on this ground are we going to let you marry our sister, all the men choose to circumcise. The Bible says they told all the men to be circumcised, and all the men followed. They fell in line, they fell in line, and they said, yes, we will do it. So it must be somebody of influence, of you know, a reputable person in their community, even though he was an unbeliever, even though he was an idiot prince. So he wasn't just an ordinary person, but look at it, even though the Bible described him as honorable, an unbeliever, Honorable and as honorable as he was as an unbeliever, look at his action. He could rape. And that's what happens. An unbeliever is always an unbeliever. It doesn't matter if he is rich. It doesn't matter if he has influence or is highly placed. If he is an unbeliever, you can expect you know anything from him. And that shows us that there is a thing that happens in the life of the believer that is transformational, that will not make him do some things that he sees it as, no, it's, too, it's beneath me. This is, no, appalling. I cannot be found. How do I explain it that as a believer, I, I, it was told that I raped a woman? No, no, no. But I don't believe her. You try to justify it and you said, okay, she came into the room with me now. It was because she wanted it afterwards. She was the one that came to, to, to my house or to my community. Because Dinah must have been raped inside the house, not on the street. So she must have voluntarily walked into the space of that man for him to be able to do that. I pray the Lord will help us. So the case of your, yourself and your wife, Thank God it turned out to be good. And like I said before, uh, the Bible says sometimes a man can have, or a woman can have an unbelieving husband. And the, the reverse can be the case. And the Bible warns that you should be careful that your lifestyle can be the reason that will <coughs> convert, bring conversion to your wife. But that is... If both of you were unbelievers, and now in the process of time, one of you became born again, and the Bible says you should not divorce the person. Not that you should go and marry somebody that is unbelieving and say, okay, uh, I will change that. Sometimes it doesn't work like that. Uh, because the Bible tells us, even God warns that don't do it. Because most times, the force of evil and the power of evil and the influence of evil is stronger and higher sometimes than that of good. So in most cases, they always, unbelievers, or when you marry somebody that is not a Christian, the possibility is that the person might turn your heart away from God. And that is the reason why God says you should not do it. Because why do you even want to start uh, something that God you know, does not sanction and you are hoping and saying in your head, maybe God will change something, the person, or oh, don't worry, I will, you know. But in, in your case, it, it turned out to be well, and we praise God for that. But the church is not going to encourage uh, anyone to leave this community that we have. This is our community, community of Christians, like-minded you know, people. So to go out there to go and marry an unbeliever, we hope that uh, you know, uh, he or she changed. That is not what the Bible says. If you did it and you have lived the after, Thank God. <clears throat> like I said, uh, if I'm a woman and I you tell me I'm an unbelieving woman and you came from Europe and you want to come and marry me, I will not say no. 
if you tell me I can have a disease, I will still feel it. Because I, 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 yes, that is what happens. An unbeliever, if a she, like you pointed out, you, you were not on this level, you knew what you were uh, doing back then, perhaps you wouldn't run into it. I doubt it critically because marriage. If you really believe that marriage is uh, getting to the you will be careful about making a kind of, you know, decision. Uh, you will sit down and ask, that what if this happened or this happened? So you don't want to make the mistake of marrying somebody that is not, even with the person that you know, that you pray, that you, you, you fasted, you trusted God. You can still have issues. Talk less of somebody that you didn't know about. There were people that would tell you that that they are sure about this, you know, choice. That they heard the voice of God clearly. You see, and even in in, in, in that marriage, they still have problems. I am aware that there are people in the church that <clears throat> when they were about to marry a brother <laughs> their pastor at the time did not want them to marry they, this, he says no this person I don't think based on what I have heard that you have told me that I know I don't I'm talking about in our church here they were not in this church at the time they were in another church she was in another church and when she told her pastor then that this is the person that I wanted to marry the pastor categorically told her that no uh, this cannot be but yet she moved away from that place came to another church she still went on and married the brother and now she knew that she the pastor is a man is not God but the the pastor has said what he thought based on what he knew. But God can change that situation. Yeah. God can make them to find happiness and all of that and continue in their, you know, uh, in their union. So God is faithful. When we commit everything to God and leave it at the feet of God, God is not And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Our time is fast, um, but this story is a familiar story. And one of the things that I will just say before we go to the Lord in prayer is what Jacob did and what he did not do that led to the decision of Simeon and Levi to go and massacre the people of Shechem. The Bible says that when the news got to Jacob, the Bible says Jacob did not see anything. He waited for Simeon and Levi uh, to come into the house. And that created a void, a vacuum. <clears throat> you are the father in the house. Stand up when it is time for you to make a decision. Because when your children sees, or when you, if your wife sees that you don't take action, you are passive, you are laid back, they will want to step in. And many times when they step in, they will do the wrong thing. Think about it. If when Jacob heard about this, he got up and he says, I'm going to go to Shechem and go and have a word with them. Perhaps Simeon and Levi will not just have done these things, but the Bible says he sat back and was waiting. So when the, uh, Simeon and Levi uh, came back, they were asking what is going on. The Bible did not tell us that Jacob did anything. And it's important that he in the house. It happens also in the church. Sometimes people want to put themselves where they don't belong, and you need to let them know that no, 
this is uh, where you are. If you have a leader in the church that does that is leading from behind, that's what happens. People will go and do things in your name that you didn't sanction because you are just sitting down there. You are not. You don't have sense of direction. You don't have a purpose. You, are, you don't have any drive. You don't. And the same also. At leadership is not an empty title. It comes with responsibility. It comes with wisdom. It comes with grace for you to be able to lead and don't lead people into the church. And this was what you know uh, happened in this passage that you know it was sad about Jacob. He, there was no mention of him getting up and saying that I'm going to go there and have a word with him and let him know. Because if he had gone there, perhaps he would have come back home to tell uh, his children that are taking care of it and blah 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 and that would have ended it but when they saw him that he was just sitting down there the boy says that no we are not going to take this since our father is not going to do anything about it we will do something and eventually he went not only that by the time you look at um, what the people of Shechem also did you will see that it's unfortunate. They allow themselves to be circumcised just for the sin of their prince alone. You can see loyalty. Everybody says they are going to circumcise. Even though that circumcision is not acceptable by God because that violates the covenant of circumcision. That is not what God you know, intended when he asked every, uh, the children of Israel to circumcise. The circumcision is not for because you want to get married. The circumcision is for you to be identified with the people of God. But these people because their uh, prince has violated uh, a woman and raped a woman, and now they are demanding circumcision. They say, ah, because of your sins, whatever they say, we will do. And we will do because of you. No. Everybody should have come together and said that, no. Even we, if we are going to circumcise, it shouldn't be on this ground. Let's see how we can, you know, go and deal with this. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Also, we see in the life of Jacob. By the time these boys have gone there to massacre and taking their daughters, and they even took the wives of people in that. They took so many things. In fact, they they took spoils home. When they came back, Israel said something. Jacob said something, and you could see that this thing was about him. It wasn't about God. He said, "Ha, ah, how." Do you expect the people of the land to see me? Secondly, he was afraid of retribution. He was afraid that those people, not because uh, those boys did what God was not pleased with. It was about him. He could have told those children, this thing that you have done, God is not happy with you. But no, he didn't mention God at all. He wasn't concerned about what God thinks. He was concerned about himself. Ah, the people of the land, now you have made me to be obnoxious to look obnoxious before these people. And not only that, now they are going to come after me. They are more than us. When they come after us, what is going to happen? He didn't, for once, talk about, oh, come on, we are God's heritage. We are the people of God. We should be a noble example. God says we should not kill. Now you are gone to kill. It's like somebody sending rats to you and you are sending snake to the person. It's not the same. But he never mentioned God. And sometimes that's what we do. We are always looking at ourselves. How people will perceive us. When we are talking to our children, sometimes we make the mistake and say, ah, if you are doing like this, don't you know I'm a leader in the church? Don't you know that? So oh, yes, I... I People know me as a committed brother or a committed sister in the church. Why are you doing like this? No, no, no. Sometimes we need to take it away from ourselves 
and point those children to God. That you are answerable to God. It's not about me as your, as your, as, as your father or as your mother. What you are doing, God is not happy with it. It's not uh, how will people see us. That shouldn't be our concern. It should be rather about God. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Eventually, this man corrected or rebuked his children, but it was too late. By the time we come to Genesis chapter 49, the Bible says when he was about to die, when Jacob was about to die, he pronounced specific, he made specific pronouncement on these two children. And brother, did you know that everything he said came to pass? And that's why it's important that we are careful about what we say to our children in our anger, in our frustration, in our disappointment. Because as parents, God honors it. It sticks on them. He said they will be scattered. And the, the Simeon was scattered. Levi was scattered. He called them instrument of cruelty. And there's a lot. Time will fail us to see what the Bible is teaching us in this passage. And I pray that the Lord will help us to learn the lesson he wants us to learn in Jesus' name. Let's rise up on our feet as we go to the Lord in prayer. And let's talk to the Lord. That the Lord will help you and I. That we will not fail our children, we will not fail God. Everything we need to do, we will do by the grace of God, in the wisdom of God. Open your mouth and pray. I didn't say we should stand and be silent. Let's open our mouth. And commit what we have heard unto the Lord. We are God's children. He is speaking to us this morning. Teaching us how to deal with situations that can, you know, make us to be unhappy. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. All the lessons that you have learned this morning. Let's pray that it will profit you and I. That we will be an example of a Christian indeed. Whatever the situation is, whatever, wherever we find ourselves, let's call upon the Lord. That, oh yes, the Lord will help you and I. In the name of the Lord Jesus. He's a faithful God. He's a faithful God. The, 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 our children will not do things that will re bring reproach unto us. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That will not bring threat to our lives. Eventually, Jacob left that place and went back to Bethel. That was not where God intended for him to be in the first place. But, oh yes, the, the, the conditions and the situation that necessitated him were not, you know, unpreventable. Talk to the Lord in prayer. In Jesus' name, 